POV, you're 23, living in a in an apartment in Toronto, doing your dream job and hanging out with your friends. You're the main character. And the comments on that video, every single person's asking you how you did it. You know, I like to drive a little fast sometimes. I got banned from that dealership before. Whoa. Wait, what? Uh, Michael's lucky oh, he wasn't like legally persecuted for that. I'm doing my garments and like trying to squat down and use it. And I look in between my legs, snake. I was mortified. I'm one of those people who is, uh, even then, I was so certain about it. It was like, I will do whatever it takes. And I say, any job will make you money. Is this a job that you're passionate about? I don't, if if you're not passionate about it, you're going to hate yourself in five years. Get into the elevator, you know, press the button, diarrhea. How much do you know about Grindr? Hello and welcome to part one of the world's first exclusive interview with professional car photographer, CGI artist and all-round great guy, Michael Chang. In today's podcast, Michael shares with us everything from how he became successful at the age of 23 doing his dream job to how he got banned from a major car manufacturer, as well as some more personal stories such as his experience with coming out, some grinder stories, and that one time that he got attacked by a snake while trying to take a dump. Even if you're not a big fan of cars, there's something for everyone in today's podcast. So do up your seatbelts, slam down that accelerator pedal and enjoy. Right, anyway, um, hello and welcome back to the podcast. It's great to have you wonderful people here again. Uh, Today we're joined by an incredible guest. It is uh, Michael Chang, who I believe is a professional photographer. That is correct, yes. What do you want us to call you, first of all? Would you like uh, Michael, Mike? What's what's your preferred name? Michael's fine. I uh... <laughs> Mike or Mike. <laughs> Funnily, Michael's <laughs> fine, honestly. Funnily, like Big people, M. people, <laughs> people here, like all my high school and university friends, somehow by collective decision decided that they would always call me by my full name, and it's the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> so it's never <laughs> just Michael with my friends; it's always Michael Chang. It's very strange. You're one of those popular kids, eh? I I swear I am not one of those popular yeah. gays. If you saw the number of uh, close friends I'd have, you'd be you'd definitely agree. You know, in um. In the Heather's musical, when they always like refer to them by their full name, you know, like that oh, type of person. No. <laughs> I'm I'm like the I'm like the real the really do- uh, dorky one of the three, the one who always gets shit so- shit on. What was her name? Ah, uh, whatever. I haven't oh, I seen that know. musical like, in a while. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. Like there's a, the, one of the three is always like yeah. the butt of the joke. Yeah, yeah. That would be me. That would be me. I'm not the <laughs> I'm not the main one. Well, I mean, speaking of um, musicals and, and stuff like that, uh, I believe you used to do a bit of music, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So um, before I became a, a photographer and before I went to university, I studied music with the conservatory in Canada for 16 years. I think I said 18 earlier, but it is 16. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. That's quite yeah. Nice so I have been playing the piano since I was like literally four or five years old. Oh, sure. And I went all the way through high school and then also kept a little bit of practice going in university. And how old are you now? I'm 23. Oh, nice. 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 So, so a majority of your life then. Piano, like majority of your life. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It was a huge part of my life all the way up until maybe second year of university. And then it sort of died away uh, to make room for other skills and career aspirations. Do you I still? It's good to expand your skill. Yeah. So you don't mm-hmm. practice now, do you? I mean, my piano, which is the only instrument mm-hmm. I really, really care for, is still uptown. And uh-huh. as much as I would love to bring it downtown and keep it here, it is just n- not really feasible in the f- in this floor space that I have. That's mm. understandable. So, yeah, yeah, I get that. So the way I found Michael is, um, or Michael Chang, as he uh, prefers to be called, um, (laughs) (laughs) is you posted a TikTok saying, um, and it's POV, you're 23, you're, uh, you're living in a, in an apartment in Toronto, doing your dream job and hanging out with your friends. You're the main character. And the comments on that video, every single person's asking you how you did it. So why don't you talk about that a bit? You're, um, you're doing what you love. Let's start with that. Yeah. So um, I am a professional photographer and a CGI artist. And um, 
we focus. My focus is in the automotive industry, so I do a lot of、um, renders and photography for press materials, basically、uh-huh. like advertisements. So I'm responsible for producing advertisements for car makers.、Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Yeah, the thing I like about、uh, like about you, and if you guys want to check out his、um, his TikTok, it's it's amazing. It's um, it. Is you talked about that? You you were you didn't shy away from it. You like told everyone like straight up that hey, this is how I created this picture. And I never knew that they put in CG models. I thought they had some super amazing camera that they used to capture、yeah. that and then layered the background. Yeah. So、um, these days, a lot of the assets that you see in advertising are actually CGI,、mm-hmm. and what that usually means is they'll use a CAD model from engineering data and render、okay. it over top of a real photograph. Now there are、um, mm-hmm. a lot of advantages to doing that kind of stuff. For one, the data is more secure, so you don't have to.、Yeah. If you imagine going out to an actual location to shoot an actual car, if it's a car that's not going to be unveiled for three months, do you really want、mm-hmm. to pull the curtain on it and, and risk someone seeing it? Probably yeah, not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you just use a CGI asset instead.、Um, you、okay. also get a lot more control over lighting and all that stuff because you get to do it right from the comfort of your own home instead of using a massive set of lights or you know cranes and shit like that to light a scene. Uh huh. But that said, a great deal of the work in the industry is still photography, and、um, I think it was recently one of the head media buyers from Porsche said that, like, yes, CGI is a really, really important aspect of today, but we will always prefer an actual photograph. So there is still a huge amount of demand for actual photography, which is, you know,、uh-huh. absolutely still a useful skill to have. Okay. Yeah.、Oh. Yeah. So,、um, so photography is your main thing.、Um, you drive a a Mustang. Oh,、uh, is that a? Sorry, I, I just had to ask because it's been on my mind. Is that a、uh, eight cylinder or a four cylinder? It is a V eight GT. Ooh, Ooh. Nice, very nice. Yes, very nice.、Choice. I assume yeah, some of you、sexy. are car people because I heard some Top Gear references in the past episodes. Uh huh. Oh, yes.、Nice. Oh, I'm a very big car fan. How many actually owns four? We got to、uh, pander to shut up. <laughs> we got to pander to the <laughs> the British audience here too. I know. I'm a big fan of Top Gear.、Yeah. I loved the original series with Clarkson,、oh, yeah. Hammond, and May. Oh, brilliant.、Yeah. Oh, who didn't?、Uh, honestly, the three. Three,、uh, well, three musketeers. If you're watching、yeah. this, Jeremy、Brilliant. Clarkson, which I know you are,、uh, <laughs> we'd love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I fucking love that stuff. I mean, so yeah, yeah. it is a GT, and of course,、uh-huh. it is a six-speed manual because I am not a complete closer.、Oh. Wow.、Yeah. Okay. Nice. 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 Wait, wait. Because、um, I know. Right. This is a question I've had for a while, but. A lot of American slash Canadian people. I think it's more American, so、I'd, this could be a completely stupid question. Don't know how to drive with a gear stick, or you guys call it a stick, I believe. I call, yeah, man. Yeah, I call it a、Can、manual. Can you drive stick? Yeah, we call it a manual. We don't have any other like it's either manual or automatic over here. It's not like it's nothing in between. Yeah, I mean you can obviously can have. Um, an automatic, which you can just like upshift, downshift with if you、mm-hmm. really want to, but it's either automatic or manual, like with a clutch and gear stick. Yeah, I actually learned how to drive manual very early on, and、mm-hmm. um, I was gift up,、uh, not gifted, rather. I was、uh, privileged to be able to drive a Porsche Carrera GT when I was very early on、nice. learning my manual driving. Nice, yeah. Uh huh. I did that. I did something like that similar to my thirteenth. I drove. A Merchelago Lamborghini, a Porsche GT as well. Three GT three. Wait, why have you never brought that、one. up before? Me? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> What? That's、really、an interesting story. Oh, for my thirteenth birthday, I've always been obsessed with cars. It's something, you know, my dream car. I would be too if、year. I got to drive a Lamborghini. No, this was like <laughs> a birthday present. Like this was my present. This wasn't something I like <laughs> else. What you know, the one that everyone buys below an Aventador because they can't afford an Aventador. The oh, one, the、uh, Gallardo. Yeah, that's the one, the Gallardo. I drove one of those. That、um, it was a Mustang. I believe it was a V8, not a V6, which I'm happy about now that I've learned about those. <laughs>、um, and then it was the 911 GT3. I think I drove. It was like the new one. And oh, you, you got that? I don't know if you remember, but like if you, because you said you driven, you driven with something like that similar. But did you notice how sensitive the steering was? Would that have been the 997 GT3 when you were 13? So yeah,、I、yeah. Mean, was, so. I, I've driven the RS from that generation, but I actually haven't driven、no、the GT3.、Way. I've driven the 997 RS, and then the one、right. that I learned to drive manual on early on was the Carrera GT, the predecessor to the 918 Spider. So you learned to drive in a Porsche. 
Well, learn to drive in a Porsche is generous. I was given the opportunity by a friend of mine who basically told me, you know, you should try this car before you develop any bad uh, driving habits because uh, the Carrera GT is one of those cars that's extremely unforgiving if you fuck up. And um, yes. yeah, I, I mean, can, I can see that with everything you went on. <laughs> exactly, and I, you know, I thankfully I never stalled it, but I uh-huh. and I only got it up to third gear. But it was a, a fun little afternoon activity. Yeah, it, that uh, you, you see, poor, poor people underestimate the power of Porsches. To be honest, I know they've got like it's one point eight million nine eighteen Spider, I believe. That oh, I've seen that on um, loads of games, and I saw Top Gear do a review on that, and it's it's insane how. It's a lot of money for what it is, to be fair. Have you yeah. ever seen one in person? No, can't say I have. Uh, I'd like to. It's uh, yeah. it's a pretty compelling car. I've uh, ridden shotgun in one before. It's very compelling. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I have been. We can, I could talk about cars all day. Like I have oh, been extremely. <laughs> I've been extremely, extremely fortunate to be able to drive and experience many, many cars. I've done a couple of rallies and all that kind of stuff. Because this is sort of like before I became a photographer professionally, mm-hmm. I was a car spotter. You know, posting photos on Instagram of nice cars that I saw oh, in the nice yeah. parts of town. Yeah, yeah, I see people that do that, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what, what, so what ended does a car spotter do? It's just... It's, it it's, it's just an enthusiast. It's just being an enthusiast oh, okay, and okay. sometimes being a bit annoying. But ba- like you post okay. <laughs> to Facebook groups or like there are literally websites dedicated to it or just to your Instagram, really. And what mm-hmm. ended up happening was I would meet some of the owners be- who frequented the area and uh-huh. they were, um, you know, became friends and they would invite me to the private events. And we have a club no, no. in Toronto uh-huh. that I got to go to where, That's uh-huh. really cool. yeah, and then every month we would go on a drive and eventually I started taking photos of people's cars at these drives. From there, I started getting paid the owners would say you know can we do a one-on-one session how much do you charge and i would start making you know shoot packages for them and shooting cars one-on-one and that's where i got my start making actual money doing this job um yeah yeah. getting to the professional level was more like so um, you were daniel mack before daniel mack was a thing maybe i'm not i'm sorry i don't know who that is <laughs> he's the guy that goes <laughs> up to the rich guys and is like um oh oh, 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 oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah like pretty much pretty much you know, someone bought someone bought him a rolex i believe like he asked yeah. him what they do for a living and he was a rolex dealer and he was like do you want one and he literally bought he got a rolex and like, that just goes to show like networking is crazy good yeah right like mm-hmm. yeah. that's pr- pretty much how you guys start I, I, I presume do you want to talk more about that because we kind of we kind of glazed over that do you want to talk oh. about how you got your start in photography and like how much you make and whatnot for the aspiring photographers out there yeah yeah sure i'll go let's go more into that because this uh we're only yeah. about halfway through the story um sure but oh, right. yeah. i would be shooting like so i would be shooting the private owner's cars you know a couple hundred bucks a car kind of deal and it was good uh-huh. pocket money you know it gave me uh, a little bit of a net to enjoy myself through university and the end of high school and my focus was always on like i want to make these photos look like the advertisements how the hell do oh, i yeah, get there yeah, i get that mm, i get that mm, yeah yeah so okay. I would look at these advertisements and some of the artists post behind the scenes. And then I saw this GIF by a company called Circle Media, where they showed how they turned an actual photograph of a BMW X5 SUV into an advertisement mm. of the new Porsche Cayenne GTS using CGI. Mm. And I saw them. From a BMW. Yeah. So it's like this, it's like this GIF that shows. For the first half, it's a BMW, and it shows all the editing of the photo, and then suddenly it's a Cayenne. Like, they put the clay model of the Cayenne in there, and it becomes shaded, really? and it's CGI'd, and it looks like a Cayenne. And I remember seeing that and thinking, I need to learn how to do that. I absolutely have yeah. to. So that's when I started experimenting with um, CGI, you know, and picked up some student licenses for that kind of work and began improving my art there. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Thank you. Um, I by the time <laughs> I went to university, I was basically entirely doing CGI and in earnest trying to learn it uh, at the uh-huh. expense of many of my grades, and um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it got to a point where the work was getting the attention of some actual advertising artists, 
And I would share my work on sites like Behance and Facebook groups dedicated to automotive photography. And that's where I made a lot of friends who are like top dogs in the industry, like absolutely putting out the coolest work for Porsche, Lamborghini, Ferrari, all those people. And Uh It was through those groups that I made a friend in the local community who would later become my boss at the company I currently work at. Okay. Yeah. So key thing comes back to networking, I I guess. It is. That's crazy. It's really crazy. Yeah. I mean, the job that I was able to get was just like a serendipitous moment. I think that's yeah. the right word where it, <laughs> they, they realized that there was an opportunity for me to do something for them that might be beneficial yeah. to both of us. And so I did mm-hmm. a contract for them. And once that contract was over, there was murmurings about bringing me on board. And um, in my fifth year, first semester, I took an extra semester to finish all my courses because I failed so many. Um, I uh-huh. sent my future boss a line and said, hey, I'm graduating in December. Um, shall we start that process? And basically from September to December, he would check back in and say, this is happening. Um, this is now being approved. Your salary is now being approved, all these kinds of things. And then he basically just mm-hmm. said, come in for an interview when your exams are done. Okay. Oh, brilliant. So, yeah. like, when he told you that, like, we're looking at, you know, your salary and this is that is being looked at, you can't, did you kind of realize that you had the job at that point, even though you, you were going for an interview, or is that like... I'm very superstitious. I would never say... Like, I don't believe in ghosts and shit, mm-hmm. but I do believe in bad luck. Like, I believe that if you put something into yeah. the universe, <laughs> it, it'll come back to bite you, to teach you humility. Karma. So you, you, exactly. Like karma. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I would never have said I got the job until I have a contract in my hand. But I did have yeah. an understanding that things were moving towards putting me in that position. Yeah, that's the best way to be. Yeah, that's... Yeah, because I've been bitten... I've been bitten in the ass enough times <laughs> by talking before something happens to know that I never, ever uh-huh. want to talk about it again before it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you mean. Yeah. yeah. Plus, talk is so cheap anyway, so... Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Show your actions more than uh, what you say. Mm. Bingo. Yeah. So, uh, just sorry, but just before we move on, I was just going to say, you said that, like, you, like, you, you wanted, like, to learn how to render, like, cars from, like, just a, a simple picture. Well, there's this guy on Instagram that I definitely recommend you check out. His name, I'll send it to the Discord now, the underscore Kaiser. Uh, he does cars and portion that follow him and stuff because he's, like, he's a proper guy. But he does 3D rendering of cars, and I was thinking, well, you literally said that's kind of what you're interested in, so I thought... Is it K-A-I... S-E-R? K-Y-Z-A. Oh, K-Y... Z-A, yeah. So the, and then underscore, Kaiser. Oh, I know this guy's work. Yeah, it's, this is basically the same stuff as the stuff I would do, yeah. Using, That's um, Michael's alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because, like, I had no idea. I thought all of these were real cars until I saw one earlier down where basically it was a Lamborghini ca- contact floating in a forest. And I was thinking, oh, yeah, these aren't real. These are literally rendering. And I'm thinking, that's incredible. They look... They look so real. Um, yeah, yeah. Basically, similar similar principles. I'm like pretty much pure photographer. Um, okay. Oh, I see. Right. And I so think, do you get um yeah. free source models or yeah? Because like yeah. a lot of the times you deal with engineering data, and so for example, uh-huh. at the company I work at, I have CAD data that is millimetrically identical to actual cars, and that is sort mm-hmm. of the gold standard for creating uh, CGI assets. I didn't even think about that. Like, it, it could be proportions off, and then when the person comes to see the car in person, that could mess it up too. Yeah, and when you work yeah. with cars intimately, um, you tend mm-hmm. to notice then, because, like, you can have those... Um, there are a lot of modelers who sell their 3D models of cars, mm-hmm. and when you work with a car intimately and you look at these uh, third-party models, you start noticing, oh, these aren't quite as well modeled as you might have assumed. Like They only get the broad strokes. And then you yeah. get a CAD file where every single screw, every single wire, every single like fiber, every stitch on the seat is there. And you realize, oh, this is data, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is... um. Like when whenever me and my friends we look for cards, like I, I talked to him about it. So that, like we're looking at the new Toyota Camry, and I saw the pictures of it. I'm like, dude, this car looks trash. It looks like such a bad car. And then like I go in person, and I, like this look like I, I felt like it was a different car completely. And I I, I think that might have something to do with it, where it's like because you really gotta be in person to see how a car is in in real life. Because sometimes these models they don't do it justice. 
Yeah, but you also got to remember the disconnect between mm-hmm. two dimensional imagery and three dimensional proportions is yes pretty big, and um, mm-hmm. uh, rarely does a two dimensional representation of a vehicle capture it or do it justice as you, it might when you see it in three D because the light dances around it differently, the yeah. surfaces are proportionally different because of your field of view and how close you are. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same reason that people who look amazing in real life may not look that great in photographs because it's just not a great capture that's a great point yeah that's very true yeah um just wanted to uh, go back on a a point you made previously about your studies is you um you completed your studies right yes i did i took four years and one extra semester to complete them but i did finish them Mm -hmm. it was a point of pride for me to make sure that i actually got my diploma and I did do it as well, just a little bit because I wanted to make my parents happy. I didn't want them to uh-huh. have a college dropout as a son. Um, yeah. But I am a uh, dual degree. I have a major in business admin, consumer behavior, and a minor in psychology. Oh, nice. Okay. Mm, yeah. So you have something to fall back on, at least if uh, photography doesn't pan out uh, for the long run. Yeah, I sort of thought of these degrees as both a fallback and also a uh-huh. set of skills that I couldn't teach myself. Um, mm-hmm. the, the the consumer behavior stuff, it's marketing. So that yeah. kind of thing you absolutely need to have as an entrepreneur, as a small business, as anybody trying to make it on your, on your own if it doesn't come naturally. And for me, it didn't uh-huh. necessarily come naturally. And yeah. I knew that I could teach myself photography because I'd proven that to myself, but I wasn't sure if I'd be able to teach myself business admin. Okay. At the very yeah. least, doing I'm, it the right way made more sense. Yeah. And business must come in handy for your line of work, yeah? Yeah. I mean, more so before when I was, you know, uh, jostling for contracts and stuff like that. Sure. And uh-huh. absolutely, it's been very, very helpful. I mean, part of the work that I do these days is still marketing. So that know-how uh-huh. absolutely comes into play when design when trying to figure out what we're going to do with all of my work. Okay. Do you uh, recommend for uh, aspiring photographers or like anybody who's in like an artistic field? Because I personally, I find it like when whenever anyone asks me, they they like they're thinking of going to um, any sort of artistic field like filmmaking, art, like like actual art or like photography. Whenever somebody asks me that, and I I always tell them like I think you, uh, the person who wants to go into art, has it harder than a person who wants to become a doctor. Because the amount of like, amazing, amazing photographers are in, in Toronto alone and like ma- amazing filmmakers there are that just never get recognition is immense. There's too many to count. So and if you become a doctor, you can act like you're pretty much guaranteed a job at that point. Yeah, I can back you up. Because there's not very many. Yeah. It's very competitive, but there's not very many. You know, you make a good point. And I always say um, if you want to be an artist, I don't uh-huh. think you need to go to school for that. I don't yep. I feel like an arts degree is a bit of a waste unless you're trying to be a restorer, a historian or someone who mm-hmm. um an academic in the field. If you're trying to be an artist, like to produce yep. your own art, I think that experience making art and experience uh-huh. working with other artists is far more valuable than anything you could learn in a university lecture. I mean, there yep. are people who not to cast aspersions on any of my friends, but I know some people who went to four-year art degrees and they came back and their work was no better than it was when they left. Uh huh. And I would never say it to them in the to the face, but I would think mm-hmm. like that's what you spent your degree on. To yeah. me, to me, it it doesn't feel like a a good use of effort, time, money, anything like that. Okay, but would that, you recommend they do? Advice. Yeah. Would you recommend they do something um, else that, like, yeah, like yeah. you, like you have psychology to fall back on? Would you recommend they do something along those lines? Maybe a secondary in case uh, the very competitive field of artistry does not pan out. I think that um, they should do a degree that has general applicability. I mean, for me, I think that a uh-huh. marketing degree is a good general applicable degree that does not require a full lifetime commitment in the same way that a medical degree or an engineering degree might. But okay. um, for me, I chose business admin because it would also mean I have a set of tools that maybe most artists who go to art school aren't going to have. You know, knowing uh-huh. how to network, knowing how to cold call, knowing how to pursue leads, read a contract, go through legal stuff, 
on your own is an asset. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely an asset, and it's not one that many people have from the get go. And I don't think it's one that's and- easily taught, self taught. Yeah. And business is great because, like, one, it helps you in what you already want to do. But also, if if you decide maybe in the future that photography is not something you, you want to do anymore is, like, you can go into accounting after that, right? Like, you, it, it opens doors to, like, both high-paying jobs and assist you in what you want to do currently. Absolutely. And, I mean, if you want to yeah. be a photographer and you have a business admin degree, but photography is not working out immediately for you, I mean, mm-hmm. there are companies out there, go work for Nikon, go work for Canon, go work for, you know, Vistech or like uh, photography yep. studios. There are companies that you can apply your skills and your field of expertise in the interim and mm-hmm. simultaneously work on your art with. And that was sort of my plan is if I didn't um, Im- get a job immediately, I was fully ready to apply to like um, a local camera store or even like any general marketing degree or a general marketing job um, with in a field that I could felt like I could talk about naturally, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's sick. I do see a lot of people going into jobs that I'm like, when I ask them why they want to do it, they say, oh, because it'll make me money. And I say, any job will make you money. Is this a job that mm-hmm. you're passionate about? I don't. If it if you're not passionate about it, you're gonna hate yourself in five years. You know. Yeah, that is that is fantastic advice. That's a clip right there. That was brilliant. <laughs> Let's go on the TikTok page. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, mean, oh, I just that was fantastic. I could not fathom <laughs> seeing myself working in like a dead end job or anything like that. I mean, my father mm. when he found mm. out that I did. So we have a program here called the Ivy School of Business, and I mm-hmm. my original intent. Also, my parents' intent was that I was going to go there because it's sort of like one of the best uh, business programs for undergraduate students. And when it became a possibility that I wasn't going to make it, I remember my father sat me down and told me that I should get like a CPA, like a Charter Professional Accounting Certification. Yeah. And I remember saying to him, I would sooner rather die than work a job like that. (laughs) I couldn't, I'm That's one of those right. people who is, uh, even then oh I was so certain about it. It was like, I will do whatever it takes to avoid uh-huh. ending up in a desk job like that, because I know that my skills and my talents are worth more than that. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah. You do you want to give a shout out about your socials really quickly? So people can learn more about like what mm. you do and stuff mm. in, in case Good idea, yeah. I yeah. forgot to give a shout out earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, my TikTok is three changs no formatting or anything like that if you guys want to follow me there i do apologize it's it's mostly chaotic and like very gay so i can't promise it's going to be very entertaining for everybody but you know Mm. if if i fit your niche mix of cars uh really stupid humor uh self-romanticization and just blatant homosexuality by all means go follow me there (laughs) that's my niche that's my niche you just described (laughs) and um my business instagram is at m as in michael b as in bus i don't know underscore photography (laughs) underscore gta so that's where you'll okay. see a lot of my professional work. I don't do a lot of talking there. It's mostly just here's a collection of work that I'm proud of sharing. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, those are my only two socials that I'm really active on. I mean, I have Facebook, but please don't add me on Facebook. That's uh, okay. <laughs> mostly just for my friends. And yeah. yeah. I got to ask, man, do you have three Changs on your TikTok? Oh, I don't want to out you, but you have Changs on your Instagram is there a two changs anywhere? Where's that? Well, I mean, my two changs is my personal Instagram. So, I mean, if you oh, want to okay. follow me there, Where's by all means, changs? again, it's, um, what is it? It's two dot changs with a Z underscore. Uh huh. And the story, there is a story behind that. So, oh. if you ever, and before I tell that story, I will say too, if you ever see, uh, I have a vanity plate on my car and it is two changs as well uh-huh. so my mustang mm-hmm. is um two changs as well if i ever so, go to canada i'll show i'll go and have a look i'll try and find, just I'll casually find a mustang my with a my v8 bag. mustang my manual v8 mustang is just casually uh two changs just so you guys can check it out you know it's funny <laughs> because i have absolutely had people message me on instagram before asking me if it was my car not realizing that it uh-huh. was um, yeah. It has happened multiple times now that people have spotted my car and like they've posted it on their stories. And then my friends, like mutual friends of mine and them will send uh-huh. the story to me and be like, you're famous now. 
<laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so that name sort of uh, came about because I was at summer camp one year when the rapper Two Chains was blowing up, and this uh-huh. was another nickname that people oh. decided to give me. And I promised one of my friends, uh, you know, the day that I get my first car, my own car, I would put mm. a vanity plate on it that said Two Chains, whether or not it was a Toyota Corolla or a Bentley. See, when I was doing research on you, it was so hard because you have so many cars. I'm like, are all these his? It can't be. And then I saw it was like you doing photography. So I was trying to find out which car you actually drive so we can talk about it. And I found that one. Do you have any uh, more that I, I couldn't find? No, I I mean, I just have that one car. Um, before I got the mm-hmm. Mustang, I Not was... everyone owns four cars like you. <laughs> yeah, everyone owns four cars <laughs> like you. Um, before I got the Mustang, I just drove around in my dad's Hyundai Elantra or my mom's Lexus. Neither of them are car people. So I drove the blandest car in the world. Hey, man, Dave Portnoy drives a Hyundai. So, uh, <laughs> you know, what? do with that information what you will. Fair but, enough, fair um, enough. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess um, we kind of through that spoke a little bit briefly about your personal life kind of with your your private instagram and that sort of thing um but what does what does mr michael chang like to do in his, his spare time huh I do you mean, have any spare time <laughs> that's the real question right there yeah. um yes i do have spare time but i'm i mean i'm so uh so dedicated to my work sometimes that like even in mm, my spare time yeah. i'll just throw on my personal workstation and start rendering shit there i mean I love just being able to uh, put out work and I I do enjoy a little bit the recognition that comes with that. So I am always looking for like, what's the next project that I'm going to work on or like, can I produce a set today and just get on with that? Um, I do a lot of a lot more portraiture and fashion photography in my free time as well. So that's always Uh fun. Oh, nice. Yeah. And beyond taking pictures, I mean, this year was a lot of road trips, of course. Mm. And um, yeah. I love a beach day. I There are some mm-hmm. beautiful beaches on the island here in Toronto that I like to go to. And I will literally like, you know, 11 a.m., grab a water taxi, cross the water to the beach and just spend the, my entire day there until sunset. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, disclaimer, this is pre-COVID. Um do you go to Strada and d- take pictures there? Um, funny you should say. So for the UK guys, I don't know if you've ever talked about this, but Strada is a um, car meet that happens. Is it once a month? No, it's a. a they do like a couple of meets a season. Yeah, uh, like two to three. Yeah, or, or it sometimes it ends up being one. But yeah, yeah so they're there. like these big car meets that happen. Yeah. Uh, in Toronto, and it's every. Every inch of the car Summer. scene is there. You got your exotics, you got your JDM, you got your tuners, you got your trucks, mm. etc. Um, I've only ever been to one. Oh, okay. And it is because one, I don't like big crowds like that very much. I, uh-huh. um, mm. you know, I'm a pretty extroverted person, but my energy tends to fade when it's when my senses are being overloaded like that. And two, yeah. because um, despite how much i love cars i'm really not Uh that deeply into the car scene here um okay yeah i mean i sort of keep to myself in the car scene i keep to the exotic car club that i'm a part of and that's it Uh uh-huh yeah Oh my bad! You you can't come down to the peasants at Strad. You no, have no, to no, stick no. with your exotic car club. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, it's yeah. it's just that like, um, it it mostly is that sensory overload situation where there's just so much noise, so much music, so many people. And earlier on, when I was going to car meets more often, I also had beef with some people where I didn't really want to deal with them. Not that I, and, yeah. And some of the beef was like actual beef, like it was pretty nasty at times. Uh-huh. very one-sided but pretty nasty and other times it was like i don't really know how to talk to you guys and i'm really sorry uh-huh. if you like mm. it, they would come up to me and i'd be like I- i'm really sorry i don't really know how to approach this because i am genuinely an incredibly awkward person okay <laughs> yeah i i gotta ask are <laughs> these are these like did you actually like see a ford gt in person Yes, I have actually seen many Ford GTs in person, and I've also been fortunate enough to take one out on the track as a passenger. Really? Oh, nice. nice. That's amazing. Yeah. Next thing we're going to find out is that you filmed the 4 v Ferrari movie. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> what was I was going to say, yeah, this will be pretty cool. Yeah. Now that would be a dream gig right there. I guess kind of speaking of, like, dream gigs and whatnot, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, you you're in a great position and you've done so many amazing things. Is there anything that you haven't done yet that you you'd really love to do in the future? Huh. Um, you know, I've had enough publications that like I've a sort mm. of established myself as a player in the industry, but. Yeah. I have yet to have like my own billboard or my own full campaign that is like widespread publication that is directed by me. Yeah. So a lot of people. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. So a lot of people would think like, oh, you know, you want to pursue sh- shooting the most exotic car or something like that. I personally don't really care. Let me shoot the next Hyundai campaign. You know, <laughs> I want I want my yeah. work on the banners of every Hyundai dealership in the entire world. I want my photos on the billboards along the highway. You know, that's the kind of work I'm after. And you're not necessarily going to mm. get that simply chasing exotics. You know, it's crazy that you say that because we have Nav Bhatti on the line. Come on out now. <laughs> um. <laughs> I wish, you know, oh, yeah, I, that wish, would be insane. I wish he'd be able to help me, but uh, he yeah. is only one dealership <laughs> at the end of the day. And, uh, no, he owns a couple actually. Well, I mean, but you you don't you don't speak to dealerships to get this kind of work. You speak to corporate, you know. I speak to oh, Hyundai okay, North okay. America mm-hmm. if I want this kind of job. That's interesting. Okay, I never knew that. Yeah, hmm. but because dealerships do not commission work like that on their own for the most part, unless they're a niche dealership uh-huh. like McLaren Toronto. When it comes to media, oh, very that you niche. see, yeah, very niche, right? But when it comes to yeah, nobody the, knows them. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to like uh, mass-produced vehicles and like widely distributed cars and advertisements for those cars, it's always mm-hmm. a directive passed down from the head office. So that would be either the North oh, okay. American division or the global division or that kind of thing. Okay, that's also. Are you you plan going global? Absolutely, or like at least North American. Buddy, I'm trying to be Mr. Worldwide himself. I want my. <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> I want this my is, work. This is P shit for you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, that'd be amazing if you went global and we got like Michael Chang in his early days. Yeah, this is the, the first <laughs> exclusive interview with Michael Chang. Yeah, yeah, hold on to this stuff, guys. You might be lucky. <laughs> oh yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Oh, oh, that's brilliant. I would absolutely love that, though. Oh, yeah, I, I just want to make it, dude. I want to stem off the question that Rob gave you. Is there any car that you have yet to work with that you want to work with? That you like, it's like you really want to work oh, with. Oh, that's it? an excellent question. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. uh, a few cars come to mind, and they're all cars that are very, uh-huh. very difficult to come by here in Canada, and also just because they're extremely rare. I have mm-hmm. um, the Alfa Romeo a Disco. Honda Civic. Yes, a Honda Civic. Yeah. <laughs> the Alfa Romeo. Sorry, you Alfa Romeo what? The Disco Volante, the coach-built okay. one that's derived mm-hmm. from an 8C, I think is one of the most mm-hmm. stunning vehicles in the world. Jeremy Clarkson's review of that car like was so exquisite and it made me feel so many mm-hmm. ways about that car, but that is absolutely a car that is on the top of my list of I need to try and shoot that car sometime. Um uh-huh. Other cars that come to mind, I mean, I would love to work with a, a Bugatti Chiron. I've oh, never God. worked with one yeah, of those that before. Yeah, that would be a real, like, proper big thing to do. That would be sick, working with Bugatti Absolutely, in yeah. Kind of moving away from that um, for now, just on some general trivia. I was doing some research on Ontario uh, the other night, and I noticed there's a place called London. Is that true? There's like a, yeah, there is. There is yeah. a clone of every Irish and British town city everything in ontario so do you have old york (laughs) no we We have york we've got york York as well so we've got yorkshire and then yeah i saw a post saying that that we finally i have all three and it's old york york and new york (laughs) yeah (laughs) we also have we have north york here too so you can start chasing after your cardinal we're like (laughs) yeah you can you can start chasing after the cardinal oh. yorks because we have north york we have east york and we have oh we have west york i don't actually think we do and you don't have old I don't york think, i'm not uh, sure i mean if anyone's watching and that they have spotted a west york we're looking for a west <laughs> a west york yeah you, we're you can, <laughs> we're trying to collect all the we also cardinal have, um, yorks we also have winston churchill boulevard no, you really? yeah we have we a winston do. churchill <laughs> boulevard what, what, what do you got to do with canada like, <laughs> <laughs> Hello. We I have are, no clue to be honest. Yeah. Well, we're still part of the Commonwealth, are we not? But um. Oh yeah. Like yeah. I mean, we have like London. We have Windsor. We have like Essex. We have, and we have oh some God. like I believe these are we Irish could just towns. Move like, to the like, UK, but in Canada. Just 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, except yeah, except in the UK, it takes two minutes to get to any of these destinations, and in oh, Canada, wow. it takes two hours. Uh, I mean, depending on where you live, yeah. like Essex and London Oof. are close to each other, don't get me wrong, but from where I live, they're about three and a half hours away. <laughs> What are you talking about? Three and a half yeah, hours in, in, in the UK, you drive from one end to the other, right? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But like, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we live like in the middle, so it's kind of like every direction we go in is like either it's definitely more than half an hour drive. Yeah, but meanwhile, in, uh-huh, in yeah. Ontario, three and a half hours, and you haven't even left the city yet. Really? Yeah, exactly. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know, they oh, always say insane. that, like in Canada and in North America. Uh, the North American mindset is thinking a hundred years is a long time, and then the uh, European mindset is thinking a hundred kilometers is a long distance. <laughs> that, yeah. that is quite far in my mind, to be fair. Actually, yeah, to me, that's nothing. No, that's crazy. Yeah, that's oh, nothing. That is crazy. We drive a hundred kilometers just to get something off of Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> we drive a hundred kilometers just to get bubble tea. Are you talking about like? <laughs> yeah, I know that would be a nice thing. <laughs> but um, did you try the um, the dealership? <laughs> No. Oh, do you want some tea on that? Yes. Oh, yeah. I had a... I got banned from that dealership before. What? Wait, what? You've been banned from a dealership? What did you do? Yeah, but I did a gig for... Oh, wow. And... No. Uh, unpaid. Uh-huh. Unpaid. But oh. they um they own the dealerships as well. Okay. Or- anyway yeah and i did a mm. terrible thing i was young and i was kind of stupid and i gave out business cards to people who were there uh-huh. you know i was That's thinking oh, idea, i'm being it, no? proactive yeah, oh no 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 because someone found one on their car oh okay yeah okay so oh. oh wait did you put it there or did someone just leave it there i'm not gonna comment on that but okay, let's just yeah, say okay. i did very, very <laughs> stupid <laughs> things <laughs> So wait, um, how is that? How no, is that bannable? Unless it was like one of the cars in the actual dealership. Unless it was someone, like you know, on show. Dude. I can understand they might be a bit. Um, no, can you not do it that? It was a privately owned vehicle. Ah, but right. the issue was Rubes. they found it. Right. The the not just they, the president of the dealer found it, <gasps> oh, and I was never allowed to work at that place again. It. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, Michael's lucky oh, he wasn't like legally persecuted for that because a crime in like, canada no, no, no. <laughs> themselves yeah. are such assholes about it oh yeah like they, they don't are. let anybody do anything crazy I think they're quite stuck anything up, they? yeah they are quite stuck up about it it's weird because as you said like the the company's the big like especially they are like really uptight with everything they're so like this is what you need to do, and if you don't, then we're not going to sell you anything. That's like Rolex as yeah. well. Sorry to bring that up, but I'm a quite an mm. avid uh, watch fan myself, and uh, I was uh-huh. watching a video about this. Uh, I was looking on Reddit, yep, that Reddit kid, on r slash watches, <laughs> and someone said that Rolex turned me down, so I went next door and bought this, and it was like a tagger watch, and I was like, oh, nice, nice. But after looking in the comments, it was like, that's why I hate Rolex, and it was like a thread of people uh-huh. going, yeah, same and then I asked the question, like, wait, why do people hate Rolex again from this picture? And he goes, well, to answer your question, people who walk into Rolex and they ask for a watch will be turned down because of the way they're dressed. If they don't look rich enough, they'll be turned down. If they don't look wealthy enough, they will be turned down. People, Can yeah, they do that? None. They do that, Well, let's yes. ask Michael. Michael, is this true? You own a Rolex, don't you? What? Don't, don't you own a Rolex? No, girl. I do. I am not a watch oh, person. You know, but uh, I, c- oh, okay. I can attest to the fact that this is a very common practice in the super luxury world. Yeah, it, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. It's awful. Not to beg on even more, but I mm. love <laughs> as a brand. Maybe I'll never be allowed to buy one after I say this, but at look least from my own, <laughs> from what I've heard, there are some terrible, terrible hoops you have to jump through just to get a car. Mm. I mean, yes. they won't let you. I've yes. heard stories of, that, of them saying they won't let you buy a new car unless you've bought a used one first. That's like and well, they won't let you buy a high works. performance car unless you've bought an entry level car first. It does seem quite pretentious, mm. uh, and yeah. to some extent. And, oh. and you know what? <laughs> that makes me <laughs> absolutely <laughs> fuming. Uh, I've got a story just before we segue onto the uh, thing. Sorry. Um, That's dragging good. on now. Um, uh-huh. Well, I, I saw on Instagram a very long time ago. It's saved somewhere because it's funny and mad story. But someone went on a date in the Shard, okay, in the in London. Uh-huh. And that, it's like, a, I don't actually know what the Shard is personally. I know it has, like, it has a restaurant. I know that. So 
they went to the restaurant for a date. So they ordered like three bottles of the sh- this champagne. Um, uh huh. Or they ordered something, but they thought that the bottle said fifty pounds. Um, but uh-huh. when they got the bill, it was fifty grand. Oh my so god! So they oh ordered a god. bottle of fifty grand champagne, thinking it was only a fifty quid champagne bottle, and it kind of blew my mind. And then she carried on talking about how. Um, she said, wait, why didn't you even, why did he not mention this? Like, why didn't you, like, say this is a 50 grand bottle of champagne? Are you sure? And it's like, yeah. well, we have billionaires coming in here all the time. So we just assumed that you knew it was 50 grand. And she goes, I can't afford this. I don't uh-huh. have that money. She goes, well, can you, can you play retail yeah. price? Can you pay like nine grand or however much is for all the bottle without them? Oh and then the retail God. is like 49 grand or something. Yeah. So I think they ordered like three yeah. bottles, which came to a, a total of, 50 grand so she's had to set up this direct debit from a from a bank to the shard uh-huh. so that every month she pays the shard some money and it's like oh my, oh my god. god so oh anyone listening god. and they're going to take someone on a date always please check the prices of your bottles or just check the prices yeah. of everything <laughs> that's all i'm saying <laughs> yeah g- good advice that's something else to go at the start of the yeah. <laughs> yeah no kidding hey michael um, yeah when you go big, you're gonna take me to Delilah's, all right? In in LA, that's like my one place that I want to go. Where is that? Where is that? In LA, Delilah's. It's that um the famous restaurant that all the celebrities go to. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. LA, okay, deal. Oh, if you're gonna I, take me there when I, you're big. If I ever make it big, you'd better reach back out and say, "Hey, you know, play this recording and just say, take when <laughs> when you get big, down, you back know? on. <laughs> yes, you said you take me to Delilah's. Yeah, if I ever make it big. <laughs> I'll take you there. Nice. Yeah, I'll take yes. I'll take the whole podcast there. I'm sure you Whee! guys will be big by then too. So yeah, well, uh, hopefully. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think uh, before we went on to all that, we we're about to absolutely. transition into yes. a um, a favorite segment of the podcast, and that's absolutely fuming. Uh, so basically, uh, I think you've seen some of our previous podcasts, but what we do, uh, if you're a new listener here, is we, we just talk about what's made us fuming this week. If something's annoyed us, we get it off our chest. Uh, and I guess I'm going to start with you today, Michael, because you're the guest. Uh, has anything made you absolutely fuming huh. this week? That's a good question. What has really upset me this week? Okay, I know. I will preface this by saying I try to live my life anger-free, but there is nothing that gets me <laughs> going more yeah. than a left lane hog. Oh, like, yes. <laughs> Like um, I'm when you're on the freeway. I guess it's a right lane for you oh, guys. Oh, I guess it'd be a right, okay, a road. passing lane hog because <laughs> I, it has happened multiple times this week. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe I think all the assholes are back on the road, but I got caught mm. behind so many of them. And, you know, I like to drive a little fast sometimes, or at the very least, I like an open road ahead of me. <laughs> so I would... And I don't like weaving in and out of traffic either. So I'm that guy who's flashing their lights telling a person to move over. And it's just shocking to me that people still don't really understand road etiquette after how long driving. Because these are it's always old people who are doing that. It's never young people. And like I that gets me going like so what was the name of the segment again? I want to quote it to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> that gets me absolutely fuming more than anything these days yeah i, I can see why that would get you absolutely fuming <laughs> so phil what has made you absolutely fuming uh you know what i'm gonna take it back to the bathroom a place where a lot of our podcasts have gone okay uh, <laughs> but this time i'm going to talk about the shower okay now i'm a man who likes to have a shower every day you know i like to feel clean uh, yeah, and we've got an extractor fan uh, I'm sure you know what that is. Doing the bare minimum, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bare minimum. Um, but we've got an extract fan, which basically what that does, I'm sure you all know, is it sucks out the hot uh, from the shower, um, like the hot moist air, and it, it puts it outside so that your bathroom doesn't get damp. But the problem is our extractor fan is on the roof of the shower, which right. makes sense on paper because hot air rises, yeah. the uh-huh. hot air goes straight out. Yeah. But I can already because, see this. Yeah, because the cold air is coming in oh. from the extractor fan. There's a load of condensation right above the shower. So when I'm in the shower, there's just a constant drip of freezing cold oh. water. Oh yeah. Oh, it's oh, it gets me absolutely fuming. It does. <laughs> I can imagine that does get you absolutely fuming. Because yeah. um, as embarrassing it is to say, 
I like to sit down in my shower because my shower. I have a shower tray and like a glass. Uh, you peasant glass thing. Yeah. <laughs> How is that? That is anything. It makes it. You like, want to wallow I'm, in your filth at the bottom <laughs> of well, your shower? Sure, why not? I mean, I get up and wash off anyway. But like, I sit in the back, right underneath the shower, so it, like drips onto my legs rather than like my whole body and like drips onto my legs. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> um, and so, like the really cold water that like the condensation on like the tap because where the hot water and the cold water come through yeah. to meet in the shower like the cold thing it gets so like there's so much moisture on there condensation is incredible it just drips and it's like oh my god now I can't sit there I need to move <laughs> but, <laughs> but I think that's um, that's that's the world trying to tell you something really yeah right. I, I think stand up in yeah your stand up in your shower dude dude but I'm lazy <laughs> as fuck I want to like down in the shower oh my Honestly, god I, can, like, I do I literally do <laughs> This morning, in fact, got in the shower, sat down and lay down in the shower with the water just on my face, dude. It was just funny. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, yeah. what's got me absolutely fuming this week is mm-hmm. we recently, for college, have been told to take some pictures or drawing or a video uh. for something to call, uh, be entered on a website about entity. And, well, I was doing this lesson and I looked out the window and it was like blowing a blizzard outside with snow. And it was the, bl- the sky was blue and it was the sun was shining. So I thought, wow, this is an incredible picture opportunity so i go into my mom's bedroom because she's got a better view of like all this stuff so all i right. go in there and i take a picture and uh, about a foot high off the windowsill i hold my phone oh. and it slips out of my hand and it lands literally like like that nothing like not hard at all and i've dropped it a lot and i look up and there is a big old massive like spider web crack on the top oh. right and i'm like oh, hold on, is that just dust? Oh, I try to wipe it off and I feel it and I'm like, oh, no, you're joking. That isn't... Um, I, so, recent, that has actually got me... It's oh, got me absolutely we fuming. We were on call to you at the time. You were in the college chat. Oh, we were at the college call and I told Phil that this has got me absolutely fuming and I literally dropped it from... Not, I don't even think a foot in the air. Less than a subway, all right? It hit the <laughs> hit the de- hit the windowsill and it was like, I smashed the top right and that did indeed get me absolutely human so, yeah uh, well, oh, Harvey, God, moving wrong. on what, what has got you absolutely human uh what's got me absolutely human i'll tell you that much ruben um <laughs> the news report and over to you yep, well. <laughs> <laughs> um i i gotta think hold on i i, I didn't prepare one for today oh, um, you're always so unprepared are they i'm sorry i i I'm sorry, it's not even making it into my podcast, so I don't really care. Um, <laughs> well, we can see where uh, his priorities him. lie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me think. Oh, okay, I got one. COVID. COVID's got me absolutely fuming, Rob and Ruben and Michael. <laughs> uh, too many hosts now. Um, I, I, I hate, like, okay, I love it because of school. What? I love it. I love it because of the school. We can do it online. It's a lifesaver for me. I love it. Mm. Um, I could just wake up, roll over, turn on my lesson, go back to sleep. Amazing. Great. Um, <laughs> but what I don't like is that it's been way too long since I've had a proper outing with any of my friends. And I'm yeah. getting sick and tired of staying home. And doing nothing all day, every day. Don't because I, I turned nineteen me. actually uh, during COVID. What? So I can't do any of the. F- yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, how old do you think I was? Well, uh, no, I'm, I'm just now. like I assumed you guys would be around my age, so like early twenties or something like that. But I was more saying what, as uh-huh. in like you're missing out on like a quintessential rite of passage for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah exactly. And I, I hate it. Mm. Like I want to go to the casino. I want to buy my first drink. <laughs> I want to do all these things. <laughs> Why do you want to oh, go to you the casino. Oh. Sorry. Why would you ever want to go to a casino? Because it's never just casinos are dope. I would love to play poker because I've played poker with my nan. So I don't know how to play that's poker. Sad. I feel like uh, the only yeah, thing I'd be able to do is play blackjack. Blackjack's we- utter is like the Chad game you'd play. Like you'd go there and you'd play blackjack because I know how to. That's kind of it. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, well, blackjack's easy this- though. Yeah, I, I exactly. like it though. That's what <laughs> <laughs> this probably won't. This probably won't make it into the podcast little segment. Just but, but it was a bit of fun. Uh-huh. Uh, Michael, uh, could you guess our ages for each oh, of us? Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> well, I, I guess I already. I, I guess I already know Harvey is either nineteen or twenty. Yeah. 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 Um. Oh God, I'm trying to think about. <laughs> well, I would assume Ruben is probably around my age. 24 25 
Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Right. Do me now. Do me now. Yeah, go, go, go. Uh, God, I mean, I, my assumptions were always that you guys would be about my age, but, uh, you know, I will say that you seem to have your shit together a little better, so you see, to me, that strikes me as making you just a <gasps> bit older. Maybe 26, 27? I don't... Wait, is that me or... Yeah, you, or you, you, Phil. Oh, nice. Thank you. Um, thank you. I do, I do appreciate, I appreciate the that. That's a, no, that's no, a massive thanks. compliment. No, no, It means a lot. <laughs> Listen, there's only so much to go off of when you're talking no, about course, here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Trust me, like, if you saw me in real life, it wouldn't be any easier. Uh, like, uh, you're not the only one. Everyone thinks I'm, like, 20-some. Yeah. I am very old-looking, yes. I'm an old spirit. So, uh, uh, talk about cars real quick. What, yeah. what what would be your complete dream car to own and drive? Good a, question. Compa- uh, apart from the, the Mustang, uh, Mike. Oh, fuck. Do I, only have, do, I, do I only have to have one? No, oh, yeah, you, you can, can have, have multiple. as many. I just <laughs> presumed that maybe people normally no, have four. one dream car. Oh, yeah. I mean, no. <laughs> I've, got, I've got so many dream cars. But I'll, I'll start by saying that my entire dream garage is pretty much gt cars first i love yeah. you know uh, harbour says mm. he's an old soul and i kind of agree um my car taste uh-huh. would definitely suggest that i am actually a 65 year old man and not a 23 <laughs> year old adult oh but, no I'd, um, I'd love to own a mustang i mean like my if i had to have one dream car it would be a bentley continental gt oh wow oh, okay yeah you yeah, know i was one. expecting i don't know what oh, else nice. I was if i if i i saw on your instagram you've, you've got a picture with a bentley i believe yeah like you were in it at least and that's pretty cool. Yeah. Last time I went to FAF, they had one, I think. Yeah, I love I the, the current generation one, I think, is so beautiful, uh, so well designed. Uh-huh. I just love it. And, like, all my dream cars are sort of uh, cars that are good for their design first. So, if you think, like, my uh-huh. dream cars include cars like the Ferrari F12, the second generation Aston Martin Vanquish, um, Ooh, the Rolls yeah. Royce Wraith. Um, uh-huh. What else? You see a trend here V12 front engine, like. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think that uh, in terms of sports cars that I might consider, um, a Porsche 911, absolutely. Uh, uh-huh. a specifically yeah, I a Targa. That, yeah. I love the Targa. Mm. Okay. And um, I think the only exotic car I would include on that list is the McLaren 720S because I think it is one of the uh-huh. best designed the cars coupe, in recent coupe. memory. Um, oh, that's a, yeah. And we'll really toss nice car. really the seven twenty. Yeah, I think like as a from okay. as a photographer, I don't have any car I love more. I think the seven twenty is one of the easiest cars to photograph. I think it lights incredibly beautifully because of all the beautiful creases and curves it has. It's just it uh-huh. has a very natural sculpting to it that really really excites me. Like it just it feels oh, no, so it, it, much like really an actual nice animal. It's really weird how it. Yeah. how to describe it and we'll toss some classics in there as well i mean if we think about classics i would absolutely consider having uh an early e-type jaguar um Ooh, a nice. mercedes 300 sl gullwing and uh-huh. uh a bmw 507 oh okay nice um so w- which one of those cars are you realistically planning on buying i think that the car that i'm working towards at the peak of my career is going to be a the bentley um, I okay. have a sort of path to ownership in mind where I go from the Mustang to a Jaguar to a 911 to a Bentley, but it's sort of, um, you got to plan out how you're going to build your income to get to those cars too, but I have a plan. Uh-huh. Yeah. Or I have an end goal in mind at the very mm-hmm. least. Siri here. Who's Siri was that? that. <laughs> you should that be sorry. That was my Siri. <laughs> uh, so Harvey, what, what are you thinking about your dream car or cars as to, um, um, what you'd like? Um, I don't know. I'm thinking for my cars, like my sports car, I want a GT2 or a GT3, which is kind of why I'm envious of you two who have uh, driven some 911s in your time. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, GT2, GT3, probably not the RS version because that's more track performance. I kind of want a little bit all around. Um, for daily, maybe like, uh, I don't know, like maybe an Accord uh, or something like something simple, but like also maybe a Demon, you know? <laughs> Um, <laughs> demon's my dream car of all time. Like mm. anything I don't get, really, I want a demon for really. a little time at least, or a Urus, or no, actually Model X, Model Ew. X Q8. Tesla. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Why? No, I gotta admit, I, I Teslas are nice. I think they are the way of the future. Um, are you will... not a fan of Tesla, Michael? Okay, I'm gonna preface this by saying. Okay, well, this is the concludes this podcast. Okay. You know um, what? <laughs> Michael will not be coming back. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think that electric cars are absolutely the future. 
I think that yes. they're not the final solution to the emissions or pollution problem, but they are a good step forward. Uh-huh. But at the same time, uh-huh. I don't think Tesla is going to be the one leading that. And that is a personal opinion because I think Teslas okay. are not that nice. You don't think they're not... Bro, it would smoke your Bentley Continental okay. any here's day. The thing, though. Yeah. Here's the thing. I, mean, it's, it's not as, it's I would thing. I would rather spend three hours in my Bentley than I would in three hours oh, in a Tesla. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Here's the issue I take with them, and it's mostly a design issue. You know, I'm very, very passionate okay. about car design, and a Tesla uh-huh. to me is a smartphone on wheels. Whereas a, <laughs> a no, I can see that. I can see. Whereas that, yeah. even like, know, a, man, have you seen the Cybertruck? That thing's okay. Sexy. That's a that different. That's a bit of a different question. Is but it? like, no way. but then yeah, the windows are bulletproof. Yeah, but you think about like a Tesla Model X is a smartphone on wheels. Whereas even the Ford Mustang Mach E, it's still a car. And I think that um, one thing that Tesla is. A rubbish car, but a car at hey that. Hey now, hey now, hey <laughs> now. <laughs> Maki is a disgrace. If so. it wasn't named Mustang, I would have. Been, I would give it more mis- or more respect. I, I but agree. the fact that it was named Mustang, completely agree. But the thing is, yep. at the same time, I think that it does a better job of being a car. <laughs> uh, same with the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron. I think that Tesla's designers uh-huh. have sort of forgotten that cars are something that you fall in love with. And they're not a gadget that's meant to be had for a few years and then thrown away. And I think that um, the uh, Porsche and Audi and the Volkswagen group have done a better job of capturing that love that drives um, car lovers more than anything else. At the end of the day, when I sit inside a Tesla, it feels like I'm sitting at an office desk. There's nothing there. You know, there's no engagement. There's no real... Uh, interior to speak of and then you look at the outside and the the proportions are just like they basically said how can we make this as efficient and well spaced out as possible not paying Uh any attention to how the car is laid out to make it look good to me the tesla looks like a cat sleeping like it doesn't it doesn't look like a car it doesn't it doesn't suggest Mm. motion it doesn't suggest um Uh power it just suggests space that transports people I, I can I can agree with you on that. Is that like yeah, the that. Porsches and all that, all, all of them, they do like the designs way better than Tesla does on the exterior. I think Tesla is still ahead of them in the electrical game. Here's the other thing too, right? Like I've driven a couple Teslas. I I was privileged to have one for a couple hours once. The build quality is uh-huh. awful. They're so poorly yeah. assembled. And th- we, I had this discussion the other day because I made a post on my Facebook about it, but. Uh Yes, Tesla has better range and it has faster charging now, but Uh the entire industry is working on that. And it's going to get to a point where most cars are going to be comparable to a point that the end consumer is not going to care. And once once we get to that point, what does Tesla have Uh left? Just a car that's poorly constructed and not very well designed, you know? That's the problem. Yes, Tesla is a tour de force for now. But it's a tour de force uh-huh. in areas that a lot of car makers can easily catch up to. And I'm not sure that Tesla yep. can catch up in the areas that it struggles with. Wait, hello? Shit, hold on. Is my thing good? Hello, hello, okay, hello. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Fuck, <laughs> man. Oh. Ooh. oh, no. Let me, uh, let's, uh, cut for maybe five minutes so I can fill up my glass, get some water, eat some Skittles. Yeah, sure. Awesome. (laughs) And that's just about going to do it for the first half of the Michael Chang podcast. Stay tuned for the second part coming out very soon where Michael talks about some more personal stories, shows with us some really moving stuff about his coming out, um, as well as some really fun stories as well, some grinder stories, uh, some toilet disasters. Uh, It's all coming in the next part of the podcast, so do keep an eye out for that. But you know what? If you have enjoyed a rating wherever you're watching this podcast, it's always greatly appreciated. Feel free to go and check out the YouTube, the TikTok, and the Instagram, all of them are the casual crowd and also please do go ahead and check out michael you can find him on tiktok at three changs you can also find him on instagram his personal instagram is two dot changs with a z underscore and his professional instagram where you can see some of the work that he's produced is mb underscore photography underscore 
GTA. So please do go and check that out. Go show him some love. He really is a great person with some amazing stories. But you know what? The fact that you have made it this far in the podcast is plenty good enough for us. Thank you very much for listening. Keep an eye out for the second part again coming very soon. And I hope you beautiful people have a great day. Goodbye.